Thank you, Lauren. Hi, everyone. My name is Samantha, and it's my pleasure to be moderating our last session for today. We will be talking to three of our panelists on how you can make your content work harder for you. I know that Krish has, you know, kickstarted the session with so much energy. Winston with his great smile and new haircut. I'll do my best to keep the energy going. Today, we have three wonderful panelists with us. And before we say hi to them, let me do a quick shout out to our audience as I understand from the team that we have about 33% here coming from the business management background and a handful from PR, marketing and advertising. Why not you guys put it in the chat room? What is your background? As so that we, you know, we are aware of it and relate it better to our session today. Feel free to ask our panelists uh, some burning questions by dropping them in the Q&A section. It will be really helpful for me to pick up your question by indicating which panelists that you want them to address to and keeping them short and simple would also stand a higher chance for me to pick up. I will address them along the way. Now let's come back to our panelists. I'm sure that our, you know, our audience today would love to understand you better. Shall we do a you know, quick self-introduction? Um, Raymond, maybe you would like to go first, then followed by Stephanie and Pete. Well, it's ladies first, you know, usually. But um, <laughs> it's okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take it on if that's, that's all right. Hi, uh, so, you know, I've been in uh, MDEC since uh, 2019, October, uh, mm -hmm. and I lead the uh, investment and brands, right? So uh, positioning of, of uh, the digital investments. Uh, for Malaysia, throughout the world, and also to talk about all our digital initiatives for the Rakyat as well as for the SMEs. Yeah? Uh, so it's, it's a bit of a wide portfolio, but they are all inter interconnected. Uh, previous to that, I was been, uh, I've been in communications for the longest time with Edelman. Uh, I used to run Edelman Malaysia and also in Indonesia as a CEO. So, you know, been, been there and done that, uh, you know, for the longest time. Back to you. Can hear you, Sam. It's yeah, your turn right. to be What about yeah. Stephanie? Yeah, so sorry for that. No okay, so hi everyone. Hi, Samantha, Raymond, and Finn. Nice to e meet you. So my name is Stephanie. I work as a community partnership manager for TikTok uh, Indonesia. So actually in here, like I mentioned before, I, I mentioned before, like uh, I, I am in uh, e-commerce department, so for anyone in here that uh, never heard that TikTok already have uh, the e-commerce things, TikTok. the TikTok, TikTok shop. Yeah, so actually we already have uh, our e-commerce since uh, early this year, but still, I mean, still building the system, etc. And for now, I mean, for the e-commerce thing, uh, we depends uh, with the live streaming session with the creators. And then uh, we have the showcase too uh, from the big, big, big creators. So you can see the product on their profile and then you can directly buy it from their profile or their live streaming session. And uh, beside of the work, uh, so I have the experience mostly uh, within the e-commerce uh, company. I work as uh, at Lazada, Zalora, and Shopee before TikTok, and then uh, I work at uh, tech company too. And then uh, I work at beauty industry uh, like L'Oreal and Estee Lauder before. So I mean, like my background is about the retail-ish and digital things, and mostly is about the community and social media. So nice to meet you and enjoy our discussion for today. Lovely. Let's come to Pete. <laughs> Comes to me. Um, I've worked in content uh, creation in some form or another for uh, over twenty years, uh, including digital, print, radio, TV. I'm lucky enough to have done that. So um, I, I like to think that, you know, every, everyone thinks of digital as this thing that exists on its own, but it's not, right? It's connected to everything else. And that's important to note. I'm currently the head of content marketing at Singapore Press Holdings. Um, before this, I started up the content marketing unit at Media Corp, which is Singapore's uh, national broadcaster. Um, and I also created CNA Lifestyle and CNA Luxury for um, Channel News Asia. 
uh, that's and I have two cats who are rapidly gaining weight just for as long as I work from home. <laughs> Lovely. Sweet. Okay. My question to kickstart our session for today is that, you know, sometimes when, do you feel stuck coming out with content? Because I do, and I believe more of our audience today can relate to that. And, you know, what kind of like, what are some of the practical parameters, metrics, or even KPI that you guys are using for content creation? Maybe let's have Pin first, sharing from his, you know, editorial background, and maybe... Uh, Raymond and Stephanie later on can add on to that. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, there, there are different types of content marketing um, agencies and creators out there. Um, and we all approach things from maybe different ways. I, I tend to approach it because my background is an editorial. Mm -hmm. uh, I tend to approach it from a point of view of, you know, if, if this were to appear on a, an editorial platform, it was done by an editorial team, how would it be uh, crafted, right? And not jump straight to some sort of client messaging. Um, but I think just to take one step back, uh, it's, it's really important to understand uh, and decide for yourself what your objective is. You know, far too often people go, okay, we need content. And then, you know, the, the bosses tell the group, we need content. And then the group just goes, okay, we need content. And then off they go, right? But decide and understand for yourself, what is the objective of it? And what do you want out of it? Because if you don't know what you hope to achieve with your content, it's going to be really hard to understand if it was a success or not. Um, so things like, is it, is it about education? Um, is it about changing mindsets? Is it about brand building or community building, right? These things are important. The one thing it should not be about is tactical. <laughs> Please don't use content for tactical. There are other ways of doing that. Uh, but if you don't know what you want out of it, then you don't know how to go about doing it. And then everything sort of gets stuck that way. Um, the other thing is, in general, I, I hear this so often, you know, when you, you get a brief from a client and um, sometimes it's written into the brief, we want this to go viral. Mm. Uh, it's really something to think about. I think that I personally feel that people need to, the industry is a little bit too obsessed with the uh, idea of something going viral. Right. Yes. Um, because if you think about it, many things go viral for reasons that perhaps is not appropriate for your brand mm. or your business. Mm -hmm. So who is your target audience, right? Who is your target audience? Have you reached them? How are they reacting to your content? Uh, are they reacting the way you hope they would? These are things that are really, really important versus mm. just sort of chasing this mythical viral status. Mm -hmm. um, and that's important. And make sure your boss so is one thing for you to understand what your objectives is, but make sure your boss also understands that. <laughs> so that when you hand up your report card, um, right. you're all on the same page, you know, because instead of going like for figures and you know, making sure things to go viral, it's always good to understand your audience and also the objective of doing a campaign itself. Maybe let's hear from Stephanie, what about live stream? Okay, so maybe from my side is quite different because like like actually this is the live stream and this is on TikTok. So I mean mm -hmm. like it's quite a bit different when you do live stream on Instagram right. or maybe like live stream from the other platform or maybe so that we know like in Indonesia we have like the few e-commerce and you can do the live stream too mm -hmm. on the platform. So I mean it's very different. So uh, on the live stream, the from the business side, I mean, uh, what we uh, see as a matrix first is about the GMV. Mm. So I mean, like uh, how much the G the total GMV that you get from your sales. So this is the first matrix, and the second is about the total view. I mean, like the uh, how the total of your viewers in your right. one session be in one hour or two right. hour, and then uh, and how much the PV. I mean, like the uh, highest view from your session. Right. Right. From the so all group. that actually counts, like total views when you're doing your live stream. Yeah. So or actually, TikTok, okay. for example, I mean, like I'm I'm from TikTok, so I have like my own back end. Uh, analytic right, right, okay. for that things. So if if it's simple, so I mean like someone like you are the big 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 creator of TikTok. Mm -hmm. 
and then uh, I ask, uh, I'm, I mean like uh, we are the TikTok team and then ask you to do the live streaming for the next one hour or two hour for mm -hmm. the TikTok shop live. And then uh, you will promote or you will discuss or if you about the 20 of uh, our product, for example. And then when you do the live streaming itself, I can see, I mean, the performance, I mean, uh, when you do the live streaming live, uh, live as uh, my backend system. So, for example, if you pin one product and then I will like how much uh, people uh, see the product, click the product, and then uh, put in on the uh, shopping bag and then check out and we will know like how much do people that paid the product or only put it on the uh, shopping cart like that. So I mean, uh, in live streaming is quite a bit different because it's a lot of things and metrics that you should calculate on there. And then we can see, I mean, like the average uh, duration uh, of the audience Okay. I mean, like how like how long they stay during the live stream, right? Stay, yeah. I mean, uh, the longer they stay, uh, I mean, like as uh, the longer they, uh, the longer they stay, the the I mean, your content, I mean, is really good because like mm -hmm. uh, they will stay a bit longer to see your uh, live stream session or your product review mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the others, for example. So I mean, like. It's quite a bit hard because the live streaming shop, especially for the shopping things, is mm -hmm. not a common. Maybe in mm -hmm. Indonesia, in Singapore, or in Malaysia. I mean, mm -hmm. still a new things, and we actually for the live streaming things, especially for shopping. Like for now, actually we adapt it uh, from the China, right? But I mean, like, because of the pandemic and blah blah blah. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like investing in this guys because like. Everything is going digital. Everything is mm. going virtual, especially for the shopping. And in TikTok Live, actually, that uh, we want to know about the audience. Actually, is about the impulsive buying. Right. So, uh, yeah, actually, uh, especially if the product price is not really high, mm. and then the USP of the product is like the unique. And then the price is uh, very low, or the price is a uh, slight bit different with the uh, other e-commerce. I mean, like the people that see uh, the their creator live on their FYP mm -hmm. or on their from notification window, so they will directly go to uh, creator profile and then see the live streaming and then just buy the product from the live streaming session itself. Right. So to sum it up, first of all, we are looking at the number of views. Yes. Then after that, how long the viewers stay in your yes. live stream. Then after yes. that, only it comes to your product in terms of pricing, you know, what kind of product or services you are selling. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we can also like hear from Raymond from your PR communication background. Anything to add on that, Raymond? The, uh, both my fellow colleagues have put it quite uh, nicely. I think uh, the first thing is to remember who your audience is. Uh, you know, you really have to, to understand how they are consuming their content. I think that's critical, yeah? So we, we, we talk about languages, we talk about uh, demographics, you know, we talk about even, you know, how are they consuming that particular content? Mm -hmm. I think that's really, really important to understand first, yeah? And the objective of that of that piece of content, I completely look at uh, Finn and I say, yeah, you know, that's what they look at. And I get a lot of our clients mm -hmm. looking at. You must make the content go viral. Uh, mm -hmm. We can't. It's it's got it's got to be good content. It's got to be content mm -hmm. relevant you know, with a certain zeitgeist to what's going on at the current moment. You know, um, then it'll pick up, right? Uh, so I think that's really critical to understand, right? Um, and there's obviously um, ways that you do your content. It's just not written content. Uh, there's video, there's TikTok, there's, there's many other ways that you can put a piece of content. But really what's your objective of the content is also critical, right? Uh, what, what do you want it to achieve? Um, so, you know, repetition is really very important. Yeah, uh, you got to keep repeating on, on a key message, uh, of course, distributed with various channels, uh, but you got to stay with your messaging. Um, and then, you know, uh, repeat, repeat, repeat ad nauseum over a campaign period for it to get traction, yeah? yeah. Uh, that's, that's critical. Uh. 
So, uh, you know, for me, it's always about what is the end goal? What is the end game here? Eh? What was your outcome? And then you work backwards from it, lah, understanding your audience. And then, you know, you fit in the, the, the type of content and the messaging that may work for you. Yeah. Right. Um, also, to take this chance to like really address one of our questions in the Q&A sessions by Su Ng. Uh, they're saying uh, bad marketing is also a good marketing. That, you know, better than no marketing at all. What's your take on that? I think marketing is, is important. Lah. Mm. Yeah. So, so let's not look at bad or good marketing. I think you want to think about effective marketing. Right? Mm. Um, I would posit that you must learn to pivot and, and you must not be afraid to pivot, right? So you may have the best intentions and you go on a marketing campaign. It may not be a bad marketing campaign, but because you didn't understand your audience and, and you have not delivered that, uh, perhaps mm -hmm. getting the traction that you need. Mm -hmm. But what's very important in this current age that we live in, which is the digital age, is you have the ability to pivot. Right, so you 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 got to test it out, right? Uh, for some reason or another, some campaigns do better than the other, right? But uh, pivot, right? Uh, if you see a campaign not doing so well, uh, change the content, try and understand from the data what you can do better. Yeah, pull the handbrake. Don't be afraid to pull the handbrake and then start pivoting. If it's uh, not you turn, you turn also can. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Don't stop. Right. Ah. I think that there is, I'm sorry, but I think that there is such a thing as bad marketing, you know, okay. there is, when you talk about concepts and ideation, um, that's subjective. So during the brainstorm session and during a pitch, that's all subjective, mm -hmm. right? Um, who thinks what ideas, whatever the other. So that's one thing, but bad mar there is such a thing as bad marketing. And that is when uh, the result of your marketing has had the opposite effect that you have intended. Mm. That's not good, right? Uh, if, if people, if you, if you wanted your audience to know this or think this or feel this about mm. you, and the result of that is the opposite, you've wasted your money. Um, and that's, that's not a good thing. Uh, but like Raymond said, you don't know unless you, you play. And then when you play, you need to pivot. Um, don't beat yourself too much if something didn't work, right? Mm -hmm. But if it's not working, hit it. Don't, don't keep doing it, right? <laughs> Just because you planned it doesn't mean you should keep doing it. Right. If the data is showing you it's not working, do something else. I believe a lot of us right here is that sometimes when we plan it, you know, from A to Z, but we sometimes if the, you know, the result is not as what we wanted, we are somehow afraid of, you know, taking that, pull that handbrake or even like yeah. Raymond say, U-turn and things like that. Yeah, but that's it. There's also a case to be made for not changing mm. tact too mm -hmm. fast, right? Mm -hmm. You got to let it go for a while first. Mm -hmm. Don't panic immediately and say, oh, it's not working. Uh, you got you to gotta give it a decent chance. But mm -hmm. if you're getting an immediate backlash, mm -hmm. if, you know, if, if it's starting to smell a little, <laughs> you should at least look into it and see and, and, and judge from there, make decisions yeah. from there. Right. Okay, I'm curious about TikTok, uh, Stephanie, because I realized, right, if you now sign into, you log into your TikTok, right, you can hear a lot of you know, those, those uh, favorite music, like yeah. Lisa, La Lisa, or even the Squid Game background yeah. music, right? So what's your take on that? Like, do you have anything to add on on that? Like, uh, do you um, encourage us to, you know, leverage on this kind of viral content mm. to do your live stream? Okay, so I mean, in TikTok, I mean, uh, for the content is quite a bit different, right? So actually, maybe if you uh, do your content for Instagram, especially for now, I mean, the algorithm quite sucks, but the Reels algorithm is uh, better now. I don't know why. I mean, maybe uh, they want to highlight their uh, the Reels, so that's why, I mean, uh, the 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 algorithm uh, better but uh, for the fit everything still uh, really confused mm. and then i mean uh, if for tiktok it's uh, maybe you can try anything that you wanna try because in tiktok there is no i mean yeah tiktok have their algorithm but mm -hmm. if you're still new on tiktok and you wanna do the content itself mm -hmm. i mean it's about the momentum Mm. for me so there's so, no like a fixed rule that okay yeah, you have to do yeah. this 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 and yeah like so actually in tiktok you 
you don't have like any fixed role for you do the content itself but if you already reach your uh, I mean like your right audience and you got into the FYP things and etc mm-hmm. that's the point that you should do the consistency of your uh, content making and you should know I mean like what kind of type the content that your uh, audience, audience. Uh, likes it's not right. uh, only about the trends or maybe it's about the how to or like education or yes, like how to clean and things like that clean tiktok or something yeah, like yeah, that yeah, right yeah, yeah. For example, the funny, yeah, yeah the funny thing is that when i first started you know using tiktok right i do yeah. not know what is fyp you know yeah it's in like it took me like maybe a week to figure out what is fyp yeah. and the hashtag fyp so yeah. it's kind of like fun to learn yeah and and i mean like yeah for example if the cooking i mean like the cooking uh cooking hacks and tips and, right. you, and i try the cooking itself maybe the cooking content is not works for me mm-hmm. maybe i work uh, with fashion or the other things i mean like every every people every account has the different types of their content mm-hmm. uh, terms, right and it depends uh, when you do uh, when you scroll in your fyp i mean you can choose like uh, which content that you like which content that you don't like it's like a tinder right. <laughs> so, it's either like you swipe yes of right and then you yeah, right. Maybe uh, from I mean uh, from that it's make uh, the algorithm itself uh, for your uh, FYP content too. So I mean if you are the new of the content creator, and I mean that you still confused. I mean like still don't know what kind of type of content that uh, works for me and blah blah blah. Maybe you can try TikTok because in TikTok you can try. content making easily and I mean it's more organic right. uh, I I don't say that it's no effort because that I know that when you make the video it's a lot of effort from I mean like from the brainstorming the video and then you take the video and then you editing and then you cut 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 the video and compile with the one video, video and then uh, I mean, like how to put the text on the video and how to mm-hmm. choose the right uh, audio to your video. I mean, it's a lot of things you should do too, but I mean, it's worth the experience because mm-hmm. yeah, you will know like uh, which content that you like. I mean, mm-hmm. like the things if you like the video or the storytelling or the everything that have the story, And you can try TikTok if you just like the, I mean, the, like the, maybe the aesthetic one, the neat one, or the, just like the photography or something, maybe right. you can still stay at Instagram. So Stephanie, you're advising us to, you know, to explore more platform? Is yeah. that we're just focusing on one? Yes, uh, I'm explore more. Because like every, mm-hmm. everyone, I mean, like have the different, Uh, I mean, like different point of view of mm. the content itself, right? Not all of the people like the content creation with the video. Not mm-hmm. all of the people like the only photography because it's boring. Mm. Or maybe they like to buy things and then review it on YouTube. It yeah. will be different target true, market true. from TikTok and Instagram. I mean, that's why from my side, it's okay if we explore more than one, two, or. Definitely, because we never know where is our audience will be, yes. right? And what kind yes. of content that we would prefer. Yes. So let's try to explore more platform instead of just focusing on one, right? Okay, sweet. Um, let's hear from Raymond. You know, from your PR communication background and from you know all kind of you know client that you work during in and that maybe you can have something to add on that. Um, well, you know, I think there's been a lot said mm. about. channels la, right. the proliferation of channels these days right and and i think the the companies or probably would be a bit lost about you know trying to get on to the sexy new thing or, or the mm. new shiny thing that's coming up right so for example now you know twitter spaces you know a couple of months ago one year ago you've got clubhouse yeah um, so things just keep coming up right but i think 
we shouldn't lose sight of, of the basic, which is, you know, tell a good story. What, what is that story you're trying to say, right? Uh, mm-hmm. It's really very powerful. It's been, it's been, I think, abused when we say the word of oh, storytelling, storytelling. Mm. Right? Uh, half of us have no idea what that means, really, right? Uh, but but think of a movie or, or a comedy or a sitcom or whatever that you've seen, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, what has stayed in your mind, right? And then that's because of a story that was told, even the National Geographic, right? The way they put, uh, you know, uh, the wild out there. It's a, it's a mm-hmm. story uh, that has been stitched together, right? That leaves an impact on you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I would say that that's critical. Channels will come and go. Uh, stories won't. Right. right. So think about your story for the brand. And it, and it really takes some time. It's not as easy as it sounds. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Uh, it needs a convergence of ideas, maybe even a collision of ideas mm-hmm. uh, to, to really define what is that longer term story. You know, like my colleagues earlier said, mm. don't pivot too fast. Uh, don't, don't run away from something. But if you've got a good Red Riding Hood story mm-hmm. uh, or Jack and the Beanstalk story, uh, you, you, you got you to gotta build on it, right? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you can refresh that Jack and the Beanstalk or Red Riding Hood along the way. But that story in essence is the same. Right. Uh, right. Uh, so that, that is your brand. That's who you are. So that's me, Raymond Siva. Right. That's, that's who you guys are. That's the story. Mm-mm. So I think you got a, the brands here should should really think uh, think about the story. What is it they're trying to convey? And a lot of times I see it's uh, a brochure, right, about who I am. Check, 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 check. This is who I am. But yeah, finding not, the placement. Yeah, but it's not telling you who I am. You know, mm. what am I made of? What are Mm-mm. my passions? And and how can I help you as a brand? Mm-hmm. You know, how can I make your life a little better? So more than just the functional storytelling, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you, you must find that emotional bit. Lah, and, and that takes, you know, time and effort. That's you know. true. That's true. And also just to take uh, one of the questions from our audience today, Gina, uh, she's asking, is it okay to like repeat your content in like different, different platform? What's your take on that, Raymond? Very quick one. So Gary Vaynerchuk, very good. I follow him, right? Mm. But he's he's a firm believer of one piece of content mm-hmm. where you cut and slice and dice and you kind right. of go across channels, right? So but if you know what your story is, mm-hmm. uh, yes, you have to repeat it because uh, if, if we say, for example, if I say I'm a playboy, uh, mm. uh, you guys will probably laugh, but then if I repeat that 20 times across different channels and, and you know, th- that will somehow become true and, and it's so with brands. Right, uh, so so you got to think about that story, you, the mm-hmm. repetition of the message across different channels, and mm-hmm. how you deliver it, including third parties and influencers, huh? mm-hmm. uh, to validate your 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 positioning, your story uh, is important. Right. Okay. Let's hear from Pin. What about you know from editorial background? Is it okay to like repeat your content in several different platforms? Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with Raymond here. You, it's not it's not actually about whether you should repeat or not. You need to know who you are what you have to say, how your brand relates to the audience before you can come up with the story, right? So your story, your message, your concept. Once you have that, I don't think anybody in the world has enough budget to go and create a different story (laughs) with a different concept for every single platform to hit every single audience. That's not realistic. And technically speaking, you know, actually at its base philosophy, one brand's story should be the same to everybody, right? Because you are the same brand. How you say it to your different audiences is the key. How you say it to an audience on different platforms, right? So you have to switch a little bit, but you don't change your story. You should have a consistent story so that people know who you are and what values you stand for, Mm. how you relate to their lives. I'm also a big fan in uh, don't waste, okay? Don't waste. Content is not cheap. It costs Absolutely. money, okay? So when you create your content, my advice is just like what we've been talking about, know who you are, know mm-hmm. who your audience is, know what you're saying, know what your story is, right? Once you've created that content, when you're planning it, you should be already planning how you're going to slice and dice this for different purposes, this is so that you don't have to start production 
again mm. <laughs> every time you want start to from save. the beginning again exactly. right like you should avoid yes yeah. so just but 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 this is not it doesn't happen by accident mm -mm. you don't you don't just you know have one piece of content and then like you know a few weeks down the road like oh i forgot about tiktok what do i do i forgot right. about instagram what do i do you should plan it out know where you want to go with your message and then make sure that your content is is able to be sliced and diced mm. that way um, because formats have uh, each format has its own set of uh, requirements right mm. so so have a think about it that way it does take work it's not easy mm. um, but most of the work i assure you comes at the very beginning mm. making sure you've thought it through and um, and ha you have a decent plan right and make sure that the audience would re relate to uh, what mm. you're saying and how you're saying it then the execution of it actually is not it's not as as, as tough mm, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, the, it's the initial thing once you get it right uh, you have a much better shot right okay now relate back to the content creation just now let me take a pause here and ask our audience do you guys like use any specific tools like asset or channel to create content? Put it in the chat room. What about our panelists, especially Pin? You know, I'm sure the editor use different assets or different you know tools, right? Yeah, I mean, you should look at all the assets and channels that you have at your disposal, mm -hmm. right? You should. There is, like what was discussed earlier, I don't think it's a good idea to jump on something just because it's currently trendy. Right. You need to make sure that it works for your brand. You know, not every brand should be dancing on TikTok, okay? <laughs> not every brand should be doing that. If it doesn't relate to, your, to who you are, don't do it just because everybody else is doing it. It comes across as inauthentic and people can see right through you. Okay. Then they're, they're not that dumb. People can see right through your, mm -hmm. your intentions mm -hmm. when it's not authentic to who you are. That said, I, I would I would actually not start with channels and assets. I would just go one step back, right? If you don't don't decide on platforms and, and content formats first, you have to decide on what you want to say, like what we've been saying. Decide on what you want to say and who you want to say it to. Then you decide on how and where you want to say it. You know, I hope I hope that makes sense. Message first. Absolutely. Right? Message first, then think about your concept and your story, then think about formats and channels. Um, because you don't start with, with channel first. Mm. It, it, you start with, with why you are doing it and mm -hmm. how you want to mm -hmm. say it. Mm -hmm. That said, one more thing. Uh, very, very practically speaking, uh, it's also good to have an honest look at your budget. Mm. Okay, it's, it's, it's a very practical thing that people forget about. Um, have an honest look at your budget. For example, can you afford video? You know, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a misconception out there that uh, video on social is cheap versus video for TV, for example, right? But it depends on what kind of video you want. If right. you're aiming at a certain standard, I assure you, half hour on TV and 10 minutes on social ads. It's the same money, okay? Because production houses work by the day, yes. <laughs> not by how long your video is on social media, right? right? Script writers work the same way. Actors, oh. are they charge you by the day also. Uh -uh. So have a think about that. If you can't afford video, should you force it anyway? Would you be uh -huh. happy with the results, right? Or uh -huh. is there something else you can you can do in its place. Mm -mm. So I, I would start there. Just go one step back before you mm -hmm. think about uh, channels and assets. Okay, to sum up what Pin has just uh, mentioned, it's like we need to know um, what are we cooking today and then we decide how are we going to cook that. Say, for example, the steak and then we figure out how to cook the steak, whether it's you know medium rare or things like that, right? Yeah, I mean, just really plan planning is key. Don't jump onto trends just because it's trendy mm. and everybody's mm -hmm. doing it. Um, and, and, and always just, you know, create, pick the platform and assets that fit what mm. you want to say, not the other way around. Right. Okay. Let's hear from Stephanie. What do you have to, you know, like to add on on this? So actually, it's already mentioned by Raymond and Fern, but maybe from me maybe yeah i'm i mean uh from the tiktok perspective yeah i mean like yeah i mean like that i mentioned before like mm -hmm. everyone have their own interest of their content right so i mean maybe if so actually like yeah that 
you all know uh, know or you see on the Instagram that yeah when reels first uh, launching on Instagram a lot of yeah. people that post TikTok video with the sound <laughs> right. with the watermark of TikTok to reels right so mm-hmm. it's like a kind of mirroring but mm-hmm. I mean for now yeah a lot of people that post the reels on TikTok too so I mean it's like a cross platform that yeah already we know that they have like the same USP and etc. Mm-hmm. But that I want to share is about the, if you post like the, your reels on Instagram, mm-hmm. I mean like you, I mean, I mean, for example, if you post on TikTok, you can do like your own stupid things or you can post your alter ego personality or your content on your TikTok, right? And then if you post it on your Instagram, I think it will not work for you because I mean, in Instagram, it's more, uh, I mean, like it's more aesthetic. It's more neat. And you post something that you know your audience will like. But in TikTok, you not really think about that because you uh, just thinking that, oh, I like, Uh, make this content and then I just want to give a shot maybe if I post right. a TikTok it uh, will be viral or will be on the FYP and blah 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 so I mean like it's a different perspective if you post it on real right. and on TikTok yeah. I mean yeah, from me it's just like that okay addressing to uh, Kelly's question here um, do you actually like suggest uh, how she's asking is it No, how about services marketing? Do you um, suggest her to use TikTok to, to promote her services or any other platform? I mean, uh, what kind of product that... I mean, like, you should know what kind of product that you have. Mm-hmm. And then you should know about your target audience too. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you, if you are like a beauty product, for example, you still need Instagram to... promote it as uh, well, by putting product out product. all the pictures right yes true and if the creators of the KOL of the influencer tried your product and blah 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 mm-hmm. you still need to repost it on your Instagram right but you can do on TikTok too it's more like the storytelling maybe how this product made and then how's the production going Or I mean, you can try the another type of content beside your Instagram to post it on TikTok. I mean, maybe you can try the percentage of the content platform mm. for your each uh, marketing. Uh, I, I mean, marketing platform. For example, if you still need Instagram, maybe you can try like your 60% percent of your marketing content on there, but you only need like the 40% percent mm-hmm. of your effort. to push your TikTok account. I mean, like for uh, the content itself, you can make like the content pillar. I mean, so it will be easier to plan to execute your content creation, like which one that I should put on Instagram and which one that I should put on the TikTok. So it's like, don't put, you know, all the eggs in one basket, something like yes. that, right? Yes, yes. Okay, going to what our panelists has just shared, right? I'm curious if you have any, like, interesting case study. Um, like, say, for example, the funnel of content creation from ideas, you know, if you are using design thinking and even different copy for your content. Maybe, uh, Stephanie, you want to start first? Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, maybe you can share with us, you know, if there is any interesting case studies. Yes. Mm, actually, maybe when I'm at Lazada, yeah, last year. Mm. So actually, when I'm at Lazada, I'm joining when the pandemic starts. Right. And then, yeah, and then, yeah, for Lazada, that uh, e-commerce things that, you know, we always post our content on our Instagram, right? Non, not only our uh, business as usual content, but giveaway and the other things. And then actually like start from early last year too, that we start your, um, my, uh, our own uh, TikTok account. Mm-hmm. And actually it quite surprised it uh, because uh, the first thing first that we start our uh, 
TikTok account, TikTok content is not really good because that we should know like uh, what kind of that audience uh, need to watch on our platform because mm-hmm. it's e-commerce things and we cannot do all of the dancing things and everything, right? So true, true. We, we should, I mean, like uh, we should uh, insert like the soft selling or like the hard selling of our campaign, but not uh, not really hard selling because the view or the ER will be going down. And then yeah, we try a lot of things of that, that uh, we try the text, we try the caption, or we minimize the text, and then we just uh, try to make like a sticker or something with the, yeah. Yeah, with the video itself. I mean like, a lot of A-B testing that we uh, we do, uh, we we done lah with the Lazada part. But yeah, uh, I mean like for now, uh, from ID, I mean like Lazada and Shopee uh, followers and the content now is like, yeah, it's like similar things because mm-hmm. yeah, we maybe from the e-commerce part, you know, already uh, actually uh, we like in the same page, right? It's like Apple to Apple. Right. And for the content itself, maybe like we have like the similar market. Mm. And I mean, for the activation too, yeah, we have uh, our own uh, brand ambassador from Korea. Yeah. For the campaign and et cetera is uh, quite the same. I mean, like, yeah, it's all about the A-B testing of the content itself. But I mean, like, yeah, if you brand or you are the creator, I mean, like the consistency is a key for you to mm, try mm, absolutely. your work. Yes, yeah. the content. Because if if you try, I mean, like for maybe from 10 content, is just one uh, get the FYP, mm, mm. the nine one uh, not uh, yeah, involved to the FYP. But if your content not in, not, on interesting your, enough right yeah, to hook maybe, that but, attention yeah but actually i mean like your your content is not fail i mean right. maybe maybe like, to keep it real it's very yeah, yeah, important yeah, 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 yeah. and i believe it's more than just a b testing you could have like a b c d testing yeah yeah, so yeah. <laughs> keep testing until you know you find out you figure yes. out the one that you know suits your brand yeah your, your services and your product Maybe yep. we can also have Raymond to add on on this. Uh, if there is any, you know, um, interesting case studies from MDAT. Well, uh, we had a campaign focused on uh, youths, right? right. Uh, so we call it the uh, young creators. Uh, and so we worked with uh, TikTok, Snapchat, as well as uh, Binumi, which is mm. a new software, right? Uh, but really, it's, it's to provide um, the youth out there in, in colleges and those who just uh, begin to work um, with a platform and an idea mm-hmm. uh, to tell their stories, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it went pretty well. Um, I, I have to say that uh, given um, an opportunity, our youngsters, so this is crowd crowd-sourced uh, uh, stories, right? We just give them a theme. Right. And they choose whether they want to go on Snapchat or, or Binomi, like I said, or, or TikTok. And uh, we saw a lot of interest cross-platform. You know, they, they were trying out uh, the ideas on different channels. Obviously, the channels, the platforms uh, afford you a different way of telling your stories, right? All three platforms have got different way of telling. But what was interesting is the way, uh, you know, they were consistent with their stories. They were trying to tell the stories in, in, in different ways. And um, that campaign won us awards. Right. Wow. Uh, only, only because I think we facilitated and en- enable the ideas to come across. Right. Uh, so that's maybe another thing that brands can look at. Right. If you if you're brave enough and you have your story and and you have got storytelling fatigue, mm. whatever the reason, you may want to do a bit of a crowdsourcing and 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 see what the public gives you. Right. What they tell. Mm. Mm-mm. About you before you publish that, yeah. So so be mindful of the risks as well. Right. But you know you have a ready ready bunch of stories and and be honest about when you publish it and say it came from so and so and you know you can even put out stories that are not completely in line with your brand but just right. to out and say what do you think right? Someone said this. Yes. Uh, so I would posit in this time and age, you know, you've got the digital channels, you've got people who are so savvy around uh, the tools and, and lots of creative ideas, right? You've been locked in the house now for a year or two, 
you know, uh, uh, so, you know, I'm sure this idea is willing to come out. Mm. Um, and that could be a, a another way to refresh or to reinvigorate uh, your storytelling. Right. So, right. Yeah. Try it out. Yeah. Um, and to address Natalie's question here, she asked when, you know, splitting that one content topic to into different bite size, right? Um, should we post all these snippets in different days or different platform? I mean, the format has to change, right? Uh, mm. Your stories don't, but uh, obviously, like I just said, just now the formats change. What you do on LinkedIn cannot be the same as what you right. do. It uh, cannot be the same as what you do on TikTok, right? Uh, so yeah, you, you've got to understand the audience. The, the attention span is what now on TikTok? 30 seconds or so, 45 seconds. Then they're switching on to the next video, right? LinkedIn, you'd probably have three minutes to four minutes to, to, to really look and engage and, and think about that content. So obviously formats, uh, you'll have to look at it and look at it. Yeah, time. different format, different, you know, attention span and things like that. I think we also answered Danny's question in the Q&A section because he asked, how long do we stay to our content until it's, you know, we realize it's time to change and until we realize the content itself doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Maybe, Pin, you have anything to add on that? There's no um, hard truth to <laughs> one answer to how long uh, yeah, right. you should um, you know, wait for and, and see if a particular content strategy is working. Um, I would maybe look at, you know, to give you a good idea, look at the um, sentiment that's important. Um, don't freak out if one or two people think it's stupid and don't like it. Trolls exist. It's fine. You know, uh, I know a lot of clients do freak out about that, but it's okay. Look, trolls exist on the internet. Look at the bigger picture. Look at the mm. shares. Look at the look at the the you know the reactions and all of that. Um, and don't take one or two comments too personally, unless right. of course they are valid. <laughs> okay, mm. if there's a valid opinion in there that you did not think about, uh, that would be that would be key to to take note of. But I would also say, you know, let's say you have um. You planned a series of five videos, for example, um, and unfortunately, you paid for all five, right? Mm -hmm. um, should you, if, if something goes wrong with the first video, not really well received, should you hold off? Maybe not. Um, if it's not, if the reaction wasn't uh, awful, right, but not working that well, you know, maybe, maybe it's in your social media blurb. Maybe it's in the headline. Maybe it's in your targeting, right? So try and figure out what's causing it to mm -mm. not perform as Performing well. Performing at the first place, right? Exactly. If you've looked at all the different factors and, yeah. by, and by video three, you know, it's still not working. Maybe it is the, the, the core messaging. Maybe it's in the story. Um, should you put it out anyway? Mm. That would depend on the actual reaction you are getting. If the reaction has been very negative, I wouldn't put something out just because you've done it. Um, I would just start to look at... Um, you know, a different way of uh, talking to your audience. Right, okay. Um, let's take another one, last question, just to, you know, to wrap up our session for today. Uh, Natalie uh, actually asked, you know, um, how do you do it differently? Do you post it differently, like um, for the A-B testing, right? Do you do, use different platform, post it on different days, or do you change the copy or even the artwork itself? Maybe you can have Pin to answer to that. I'm sorry, could you repeat that one more time? Um, okay, Natalie is actually asking, how do you do your A-B testing? Like for, especially from an editorial background, right? Do you change your copywriting that often? Or do you change that artwork or even platform, like using different platforms? Yeah, I think that to me, the key with uh, A-B testing is... You, you have to be very clear what you are testing for. Right. <laughs> right? Don't, you can't have too many factors. Otherwise, you, don't, you can't figure out what it is you're actually testing for. The other thing is when you are A-B testing, it shouldn't be two drastically different things. Mm -hmm. right? You don't want to be schizophrenic in your messaging. The messaging is is who you are like we've like we've been saying since the beginning of this you need to figure out who you are what you're saying and who you're talking to right so if you are testing 
the best way to speak to this particular audience on LinkedIn, for example, um, it is not the difference between A and B uh, should mm-hmm. not be that <laughs> drastic. Right, right. It should be in your in, maybe in your approach in in, mm. in your phrasing. Still That's in the it. same approach. Yeah, I mean, different ways. You the approach that works best for for that demographic. Uh, we are not talking about. Uh, having two completely different voices mm-hmm. because that would that would not make sense uh, for, for, for your brand. Both A and B have to still make sense for your brand, but you're figuring out the nuances in your copy uh, or in your or in your image. Maybe sometimes you're really trying to figure out what sort of image works better for your mm. for your audience, right? Um, in case you guys don't already know this, in general, images without people do worse than images with people in them. Just as a very general rule, uh, don't put images of people that don't look like your audience up. Right. That's weird. That's a very, very simple mistake. That's a big no-no, right? People make it all the time, right? Because mm. you can grab free images or you go and grab like what right. sort of Getty subscription. You know, if, if, your, if your audience looks like the people in this panel, please don't go and put blonde, blue-eyed people in, as your image. Who are you talking to, right? Little things like that. So those are your basics that you need to cover. But in terms of the specifics, that's what you A-B test. Right, okay. Any final advice from you, Pin, to our audience today and how our audience can keep in touch with you after this? I, I dropped my LinkedIn uh, in the chat, so if you guys want to uh, reach out, uh, that's where I am. Mm-hmm. I, I would say my, my final piece of advice, I'm sorry for having a lack of variety in what I'm saying, but the, my final piece of advice really is, it's not about you. Okay. It's not about you. It's not about your brand. I know people talk about brand voice a lot, and that is important. But content isn't about you. It's, it, it really is about your audience, right? Mm. It's about what your audience cares about and the conversations that they want to have. Um, and this is an example that I, 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 I bring up quite, quite a lot. Um, it's, it's more important, especially when you are using... Um, a platform outside of your, you know, of, of your mm-hmm. website. So if you are placing content on, 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 in media or, or, or if you're on social media, um, th- think about it this way. You would not put pictures of you and your cats on your corporate website. Right? You wouldn't do that because it's not appropriate. And that's not what people are looking for, right. right? It's not the content people are looking for. When they go to your corporate website, they're not looking mm-hmm. at, you know, what's the name of your cat or what did your cat eat today? Um, and it's the same on social media. Think of it that way. When people are on their Facebook feed, for example, Mm-mm. right? And you appear because you've paid to appear on their Facebook feed and you start talking about yourself, it'd be like nobody asked, right? If nobody asked, why are you on my feed talking about right. yourself? So in order to have a message or in order to to have your content work on Mm -hmm. your audience's social media feed you need to start thinking through the lens of the audience how does your brand relate to your audience Mm. how how does your brand does your brand have anything to say in a space in a conversation Mm. that they care about think of it that way so that so that you're not intrusive you know, when you're too intrusive, people, people don't appreciate that. Um, and, and, and you're not authentic uh, and, and you're, not part, you're not actually part of their lives. Yeah, so, absolutely. So think about content that way. Yeah. Okay. What about Stephanie? Do you have any final advice for our audience today? Um, we will reach out to Raymond after this. Okay. So, I mean, like, for me, uh, yeah, actually, <laughs> Finn already mentioned everything about that, but maybe for me, yeah, if you, uh, uh, I mean, like, if you still don't know, I mean, like, uh, what kind of type of content that you like or of your interest or something, mm-hmm. I mean, like, yeah, you can try a lot of things on your uh, social media platform. I mean, from Instagram or from TikTok. And if you want to start TikTok content, and I mean, like, that I mentioned before, let if you post one, two, three, four, five until ten, and then your video didn't work out on mm-hmm. the FYP things. You should try again, try again, and try again. And I mean, like the consistency is a key. So just be patient. And then if you got your momentum into the FYP, and then you got your audience, that's that. Uh, that is the time that you should uh, make 
a lot 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 of interesting video that uh, will click with your uh, audience on TikTok. And I mean like uh, don't forget to see the resources from the another creator too. Yeah. And maybe I mean like uh, for example you can still can uh, try the trend things, the viral things, mm-hmm. or maybe you can try the new things. So you will make a trend on the TikTok on you, or you will make it a viral content and people will adapt your content or will do a thing your content to do the other content again. So, I mean, you should have that kind of ideation and you should evolving and have the innovation of your content itself, not only following your audience or not only following the other creators, but you should make it. Sweet, sweet. What about Raymond? Let's come to you now. Any final advice for our audience today? Yeah, use, use the cat. It always works. No, right. No, not quite. Not quite. I think it's it's all been covered. Uh, yeah, stay with your story. Uh, you know, understand who you are. Mm-hmm. What you relate to your audience, uh, and and stay with that story. Right. Uh, repeat that that story. Uh, don't forget, eh, your audience also change along the way. Eh? They get older. They move on, and you know they they get into different pressures as well. Mm-hmm. So it's very important to also keep tabs on on what's going on out there with, with your market that will expand, shrink, you know, go into different ways. Uh, you got to keep your story relevant uh, to them, right? But the core essence still remains the same. Sounds very conceptual, but I suppose once you start doing it and, and you see the traction, uh, then I think from there you can you can build it up as you go along. Yeah, right. uh, that's what I would say. Great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for the active participation from our audience today. And there was such a good discussion with our three panelists today. And I've actually dropped our, you know, all the uh, social media handler link in the chat room. Feel free to get in touch with us. Over to you, Laureen. Thank you so much, Samantha. And with that, you guys, we are wrapping up the final panel discussion for today. But before I let um, the four of you go, I'd like to thank you once again. You know, it was impressive. It was lighthearted. It was funny. It was relatable. And, you know, I want to thank you all for keeping it real. And it was, it was just so... I don't know. It was just really, really easy to listen to. For some, you know, for some people or most of our audiences here, I'm sure a lot of them have come in and read, you know, uh, in seek of knowledge because social media can be something which is so difficult to understand. It's ever changing. It's ever evolving. You try and grasp one thing and the next thing comes out. So thank you so much for trying to give our audience something to hold on to and thank you for your time. So I would like to see you guys in the future. Uh, do keep in touch. For those of you who want to get in touch with our speakers, uh, panelists, please check out the LinkedIn. There, um, uh, The links are all here in the chat box. But till then, let's thank them once again for a phenomenal job. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Exabytes. Grow your business online.